Hey guys, this is Charles of Premium B, and in this tutorial, I wanna cover 10 tips for making HUD overlays in After Effects. This will be a combination of creative tips and compositing tips for heads up displays, or really anything you wanna have a digital sci-fi look. And there's gonna be a beefy project file with a lot of freebies, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. All right, guys, as I mentioned, there is a free project file you can download from the blog post. It includes some scenes I created and some free files from Shutterstock's HUD pack called Interface. A link to the blog post will be in the description. Now, all of these tips are gonna work best in combination with each other. They all kind of work in tandem to give your HUD elements a better look and feel. And as you'll see, a lot of them are really simple effects, but collectively, they can make a big difference. All right, and the first tip is gonna be using CC ball action to give elements a pixel look. So I've got this example HUD element, and let's say in this case, it might be a little too clean looking. We wanna give this a little bit more of a digitized look. You can see it is on an alpha channel. Now CC ball action doesn't really like layers with an alpha channel. So I'm just gonna right click here into a new solid. Just make sure it's totally black and just make it comp size. And we'll place that below our layer. And then let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and then move this to the very top. And with that selected, let's come over to Effect. We're gonna come down here to Simulation and CC Ball Action. And immediately we're gonna see our layer looks really pixelized and we can fix this pretty easily over here in the settings. And we have the grid spacing, so we can adjust this, make it quite a bit smaller if we wanna see some smaller pixels here. Set that on something like two or one, whatever layer you're working with, even zero you can see here. And if I zoom in, we're gonna see that we get these little dots everywhere, all of our layer. And then I can go ahead and adjust the ball size. So you can see we start to get really like a dot matrix look on our element. I'll bump this up to one, just so it's a little easier to see probably with the compression of the tutorial. And if I go ahead and toggle this on and off, we can see the difference that makes on that layer. Now let's go ahead and jump over to another composition I've got here. I'm gonna drag in the layer we just created. And so what we need to do in this situation, you can see the background there is also being kind of pixelized, so we just need to set this to a different blending mode like add or screen. And you can also apply CC ball action directly to footage if maybe you want to emulate kind of an LCD look. So with the footage selected, you just come up here to effect, come back down to simulation again, and you can see we get kind of like a pixelized LCD screen look. And we can adjust the ball size here and you can see, get more of like a grid type pattern. Next is gonna be using the CC block load effect. Now this is a little bit more of an obscure effect, but it's great for plussing any digital pop-ups you have. So I've got two example layers here, some code and an image. I'm gonna use the code layer first. So with it selected, come up to effect and come down to stylize and then CC block load. And right when we apply it, it's gonna make our layer disappear. And to fix that, just in the effects controls, go ahead and uncheck this start cleared. And you're gonna see we get a very pixelized version of our layer. And what this is emulating is kind of that early 90s loading effect. And so if we come here to completion, it's on zero. If I just go ahead and scroll through here, you're gonna see it's going to load in whatever we have this applied to. And so you could keyframe this and just have it go through really quickly. So it's a nice way to kind of give you that loading effect. And I can bring this all the way back down to zero and you can adjust how many scans you want. So the more you increase this, kind of the more pixelized it's gonna start out as. And then you can go ahead and again, adjust the completion. It also works great on images. So you can see this image layer I've got right here. If I just go ahead and scroll through on this, it's perfect for that quick loading of anything on screen. Next, I'm gonna lump three into one, and that's gonna be blur, opacity, and blending modes. Now, I know these are obvious to most users, but I definitely have to mention them because they are important. All right, so I've got several HUD elements on screen here that we're gonna demonstrate these three with really quickly. And I'm gonna turn on some background footage so we can see what this is gonna do with the blending mode. So you can see stuff starts to get lost a little bit up here in this brighter area. So I'm gonna hold shift and select all of my HUD layers here and on mode, we're just gonna change this to add. And that's gonna brighten all the elements up, especially over top of our other footage. Now for opacity, you're gonna see on these little plus icon layers I've got here, how they're kind of duplicating and getting a little bit lighter as they go off into the distance. So if I just select all of these and hit T on the keyboard for opacity, we can see I've got this first layer at 100%, next one at 50, and then the final one I can even lower it a little bit more and just kind of giving us a little bit more dimension there using the opacity levels. And finally for blur, I like to blur all of my HUD elements just a little bit, kind of take the edge off of them. And a quick way to do that really easily is just select everything here when you get done with your layout. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pre-compose that. So just come up to layer and then pre-compose. We'll just call this our HUD. 
and then make sure you move all attributes into a new composition and click OK. And then with that composition selected, just come up to Effect. We'll just do a Gaussian blur on this. If I zoom in here really close, I'm just going to set this on something really low, but just up enough, so like two to four. And you can see it just takes a little bit of that bite out of the HUD and just kind of makes it blend a little bit more with everything, including the footage looks a little bit more natural. Next, something a little more fun, that's adding chromatic aberration. Now there are many ways to do this effect in After Effects with no plugins. However, there is a free plugin that's too easy to use, so I have to recommend it, and that's Quick Chromatic Aberrations from Plugin Everything. I'll link to it on the blog post. And to apply the effect Quick Chromatic Aberration, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna right click, I'm gonna do a new adjustment layer, and place that above everything else in my composition, and then come up here to Effect, and then it'll be under Plugin Everything, and then Quick Chromatic Aberration 2. And once we have that applied, I'm just gonna zoom in here so we can see exactly what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle it on and off. You can see we're already getting a little bit of chromatic aberration there with the red and the blue. And for the position, I'll usually just go ahead and default this to zero because we're really gonna adjust the scale. So with that at zero, we won't see any difference. But on the scale, we can do this very subtle. So I'm gonna have it be 100 and then 0 0.3. So just a little bit, and you can see that little amount there gives us that much there, but you can increase this. But as you do, it's really gonna start to kind of give you more of like a digital glitch look if you do it too far. Obviously fine tune this to taste to match your HUD style. One other thing to note is when you apply this to any footage, if it makes the footage a little bit translucent, it's probably because this unmolt setting is defaulted to on. Just go ahead and uncheck that if you have anything that looks a little bit different than you intended. Tip number five is gonna be to create HUD flicker presets. So a lot of times when you have elements animate on and off screen, you're probably gonna keyframe some opacity flickering. You can see that's what I've done here with this bottom layer. You can see I've just keyframed the opacity here, kind of starting out at 50 and going between zero to 100, just very quickly, just to give me that kind of quick flickering. Now I could just select all these keyframes and copy and paste them to these other elements. But if it's a flicker styling that I like quite a bit and I wanna apply it to many different things, maybe in other compositions or even other projects, there's a quick way we can make a preset using these opacity keyframes. So again, with them revealed here, and if you don't see them after you create them, just hit T on the keyboard for opacity. And on this layer here, I'm just gonna drag my mouse and highlight all of those keyframes. And when they're blue, that means they're selected. And we're gonna come over here to the effects and presets panel and just click on this little post-it note here in the bottom corner. And this is gonna allow us to create a user preset It'll open up the Explorer window, and you can go ahead and save this out. So let me go ahead and just name this HUD Flicker On. And I'm saving this in the user presets here, and it's usually in your documents under Adobe, and then it'll be whatever version of After Effects you're using. And then user presets, go ahead and click Save. And after we've done that, I can just come back up here to the effects and presets, and I'll just search for that. So we can see it's right there under user presets. And I can just come over here to these other layers. I'm just gonna move this one over. Maybe the same thing with this one. I'll just drag and drop that preset onto each of these. And now if I just go ahead and scroll through here, we're gonna see we're now getting that same kind of flickering occurring on the other layers. For tip number six, use the transform effect to create some glass displacement. All right, so in this HUD styling here, you may notice I've got kind of this little glass layer here. If I go ahead and scroll through, you can kind of see how it's displaced and it's a little bit blurrier. I'm gonna show you guys how you can create this really quickly using the transform effect. So I just wanna demonstrate that. I'm gonna delete all of these other layers here just so we're working with the background. And the first thing we need to create is actually a matte layer. So whatever shape you want the glass layer to be. So I'm just gonna right click here and do a new solid. And I'm just gonna make this 300 by 400. And again, you can make it any size you want to. Go ahead and click OK. And that's gonna be our matte layer here. Next, we need to create an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna to go to new adjustment layer. And we wanna move this below our solid. And on that adjustment layer, just come up here to effect. We're gonna apply the transform effect. So under distort, we're gonna select transform. And before we adjust any of these settings, with the adjustment layer selected, just come over here to track map. We're gonna set this to be alpha matte for that solid. And now it should make that solid disappear and nothing's really changed. Now if we come over here to the transform settings under scale, let's go ahead and increase this. And now you can see we're starting to get some of that displacement here where that matte layer was. So you can adjust this. Then I also like to apply another bit of blur to this. So let's come over to effect and blur. Let's do a quick Gaussian blur. Just to kind of give it more of a glazed, kind of glassy look. 
And you can see that's how we create that displacement. So if I go ahead and scroll through here, you can see how it's kind of displacing that. And if we want to reposition our mat, we can just move it around to a different place on the screen. And it works with any other shape we want. And you can even use this technique with some other HUD elements as the actual mat layer to create some really cool looks. Next, use camera lens blur to create some depth and dimension. Now, if you have any HUD layers on screen that maybe aren't the central focus, so you can see this code layer I've got here, it looks like it's kind of close to the camera. Maybe it's not necessarily important for the viewers to see, but I just kind of want to add a little more dimension to it. What we can do is with that layer selected, just come up here to effect. We're going to come over to blur and we're going to use the camera lens blur. Now this does render quite a bit slower, so be mindful of that, but you can see it's going to give us a little bit nicer bokeh look than a Gaussian blur or the other blurs might. And so I come here to the blur radius, I can increase this a little bit. And you will see that our layer starts to disappear. But we can fix this really easily. So for mode, I'm going to change this to be add. And then we can select our code layer here. And I'm going to hit Control D or Command D on a Mac. And I'm going to duplicate that a few times. So it's kind of layering upon itself. But then I can go ahead and scroll through here. And you can see that's just going to kind of give us that slight out of focus look on whatever element that is. And I actually applied that to these other smaller code layers in the further background as well. But you actually don't have to limit it just to layers like this. So I'm going to turn those off. We can actually apply it to just different sections of our screen. So what I've got here at the very bottom, let me just solo this. And this is just a gradient ramp layer I've got here with a black area and the two white areas. And I want to tell the camera lens blur effect that I just want to have this black area be the main focus area. So let me go ahead and unsolo that gradient layer. And I have an adjustment layer here I'm going to apply the camera lens blur effect to. So let me just go to camera lens blur. And let's bump this up quite a bit to something like 20. Then under the blur map here for the layer, I'm gonna select my gradient layer. And you can see how we now have the center part in focus and it starts to fall out of focus on the top and the bottom. Again, just another quick way to add some nice looking dimension. Next, duplicate layers to create kind of a ghosting mirroring look. Now this is super simple, but it adds so much to the look of the interface, adding a slight reflection. And you'll probably do this near the very end of your HUD composite. And you can see I've pre-composed all of my HUD elements here. Let me just toggle those on and off. And what I'm gonna do here now is I'm actually going to make this be a 3D layer. Then I'm gonna hit Control D, Command D on a Mac to duplicate it and actually have this on an additive blending mode. But we can adjust that if we want to as well. But I'm gonna select this second copy we created. I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard for opacity. And I'm just gonna drop this down to something like 50% to start. Then I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard for position. Again, because we made it 3D. And I'm just gonna move this back a little bit maybe like 60 pixels or so. And you can see how we're getting this kind of mirrored shadowed copy there of our HUD. And that's gonna act kind of like an extra reflection as if this is almost projected on top of a glass interface. And if you want to as well, you can apply a Gaussian blur to this second copy. So let's come over to effect, come over to blur, do a Gaussian blur, just increase this a little bit, just to kind of muddy that up. And then I might come back over to the opacity and bring this back down even a little bit more. Again, just kind of giving you that extra ghosting shadowing effect. And out of all the tips in this tutorial, this is probably my favorite one. Again, it's super easy to do, and it just adds that little extra aesthetic to your HUD. For the ninth tip, use optics compensation to distort the view of the HUD. This is something else you're probably going to want to do at the very end after you've designed your HUD and you're kind of compositing it on whatever footage you're working with. So you can see here, this is all lying very flat. Uh, everything's pretty uniform here on top of my footage. And if I want to give that more of that first person look with optics compensation, we can do that. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And I want to make sure it's on top of everything in my composition. And with it selected, let's come here to effect and then distort. And we're going to select optics compensation. And the first thing we want to do here is reverse the lens distortion. And then we can go ahead and increase this to start to stretch everything out. You can see it's kind of pulling at the edges there. Usually somewhere around 60 or 70, you're gonna to start to really see some kind of those visual distortions on everything. And I think this looks pretty good for what I'm compositing here. Now, one thing you will notice is that it also not only is stretching the HUD, but it's also stretching the background footage. And I probably don't actually want that. I just want it to actually apply to the HUD. Now, there's a few ways we could remedy this with pre-compositions, but kind of a quick and simple way we can do that too is if I just scroll down here to my background footage, I'm gonna come up here and I'm actually gonna copy this object compensation effect. So control C and then I'm going to select my background footage and control V to paste that. And so we're basically doubling that up. And on that background, just come up here and uncheck this reverse lens distortion. And what that's really doing is it's kind of reversing what we applied to the top. 
And when it does that, the footage will kind of go back to looking normal as it was before. Finally, creating random generated text and numbers. Now there are many, many ways to do these effects in After Effects with all kinds of expressions. I just wanna show you two quick and simple ways if maybe you're a beginner, but at least get you started. All right, so let's start with the text. What I've got is just a text layer. And I'm gonna come down here to the text settings. And you're gonna see we have text here. You can toggle that down and under animate, I wanna select character offset. And that'll add this animator here. And if we scroll down, you're gonna see we have this character offset that we can keyframe. And if I go ahead and scroll through and adjust this, you're gonna see it's going to kind of offset all of our text on screen. So again, I could come down here, let's say, move this back quite a bit, do a keyframe. Let's have this go forward for a second. And if I set this back to zero, it'll actually stop right on whatever our original text was. So it's kind of a cool way if you wanna have it say something very specific when it ends, or if you want, you can just have it keep going and have it just continuously be random text. And if you wanna see more than just the actual alphabet, you can come down here and change this to full Unicode, and it'll give you kind of more of those specialized characters as well. Now for numbers, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that text layer. Let's go ahead and just create a new one here. And I'm just gonna type in any amount of numbers you want here at the beginning, it really doesn't matter, because we're gonna use a special expression for this. So I'm gonna to toggle down here on the settings and under text, under source text, go ahead and hold alt and click. And that'll allow us to paste in an expression in here. And the expression we're gonna use is math.round and then open parentheses random, open parentheses, and then 11,111 comma 99,999 and then two more close parentheses. And I'll explain this a little bit more as to what's going on, but again, this is just a really quick way for us to get some random text. So I'm just gonna paste that in here and I will have this expression available on the blog post if you just wanna copy and paste it as well. One other thing to note is you do wanna make sure you put this in exactly the way it reads, so you will need a capital M at the very beginning on math. And let me just go ahead and click outside of that box now, and you're gonna see we get a five-digit number, just a random five-digit number up here. And if I scroll through here, it's gonna continue changing. And so basically what's going on here is we're telling the source text to use any number between 11,111 and 99,999. And the reason we're starting out at this 11,000 number is because we're gonna have five digits in the beginning and then five digits again, obviously at the end. And if you do wanna stretch this number out, it's pretty simple to do as well. We can make it even bigger. So I might add three more ones on this side. And then I just need to add three more nines on this side as well. And then after I do that, we'll see the number lengthens up here so we get a longer random string of numbers. Now I'm no expression master and there are plenty of third party plugins out there that can help you create a lot of random generated effects as well. So I highly recommend checking some of those out if you need something specific. If you guys are still with me, I actually have one more bonus tip to share with you guys. And this was just something I discovered in the post-production of this tutorial and it's just too easy not to share it. And what I'm gonna apply to this is actually just some grain. So I'm gonna right click do a new adjustment layer here above everything. And we're gonna come over here to effect and under noise, we wanna select this add grain effect. And when we do, we're gonna get this little preview box. Go ahead and come over here to the viewing mode and change this to be final output. Now this effect, very similar to camera lens blur, does render quite slow, so just be mindful of that. But I really like the kind of gritty, realistic appearance that this gives the HUD. So if I just zoom in here quite a bit, we're gonna see if I toggle this on and off. Again, this may be difficult to see with the compression, so I'm gonna zoom in quite a bit. But you can see kind of how this breaks up everything and just gives us more of a static type look. And if you wanna go ahead and preview different versions of this kind of film grain, come here to the presets, you can select through various ones as well, just to kind of mix things up. But just because of how easy this is to do, I definitely wanted to share it. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Give us a thumbs up if you did, it really helps us out a lot. And let us know what tutorials you wanna see, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.